Yeah, yeah, go yeah, for it. Yeah, no, walk, walk on by. Walk, yeah, <laughs> sure, Jen. <laughs> Ready? Okay. And we are back between two yeses with Robert from Mercury, Mercury Engines or Mercury, Mercury Marine? Marine. Perfect. Day five of the Miami International Boat Show. We're over here on Virginia Key. And uh, Robert, how's the show been for you so far? The show's been very good. Um, attendance has been great, and we've been quite busy here in the Mercury booth with the introduction of our new 3.4 liter four-stroke outboard. Right. Um, it's a product that we needed in our lineup, but uh, customers are just gonna run to it because it's just a great product uh, for the mid-engine sized boats, uh, 20 feet, some of the bigger boats, 28, 30 feet that need twin engines. Mm -hmm. It is right up their alley. See, we know almost a square root of nothing about engines. <laughs> um, so, I mean, what what is this new engine? What's it going to bring to the table? I mean, is it just a step up from what your competitors are doing? Or I believe it is a step up from what the competition is doing. This is a new platform. It's the lightest uh, four-stroke engine in, in the market in that segment. How do you get it so light? Is it aluminum block or something? Well, like yes, they're, they're aluminum, but uh, we have shaved weight where it hasn't been needed. Um, uh, new alloys, things like that, help us save some weight. And it, it's always about the horsepower to weight ratio, whether you have a motorcycle, a boat, a car, or an airplane. Yeah. So performance comes from that horsepower to weight ratio. Also fuel economy and handling. Now, is fuel economy becoming more and more of a concern every day? With some operators, for example, government uh, uh, agencies that, uh, like police departments that patrol on the water, commercial operators, whether they're dive boat operators or tour operators, that is their number one cost, okay. is fuel. So if you can save them a few percentages a day, a day in gasoline, that translates to bottom line. Now, when people come around your booth and they're looking at your engines, typical customers, are they looking for price, power to weight ratio, like you mentioned, fuel economy, or the fact they've had a Mercury before and had a great experience? They're looking for everything. Okay. They are looking for everything. We, we get people that might be looking to repower an inflatable. We right. have people that might have a 40-foot offshore boat or a 46-foot race boat. Right. So we see everything. Mercury Marine, we don't do just outboard motors. We do diesel inboards. We do stern drive. We do racing. Uh, we have the little four-stroke engines. We do commercial engines. So, and I saw some very crazy-looking motors at the front of the booth. Are they electric by any chance? No, no. Those are our our new uh, our new engine that we talked about a little bit earlier. Okay. It's, it's a 3.4 liter four-stroke. And do you rate that by horsepower or not? Yes, yes. There's three versions of that platform: 175 horsepower, 200 horsepower, and 225 horsepower. Is horsepower becoming like the new Sevens Marines that came out a few years ago with their massive power. Yes. Is that where people are wanting to go? Is it like the old American muscle car race? How much horsepower can I get? It has always been about horsepower. And horsepower, that frenzy that drives that, also trickles down to the smaller engine, 60 horsepower that people can say, my 60 horsepower is related to that 400 horsepower. There's right. a little bit of that big engine in my little engine. Okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. So that gravitates people to this brand. Now, when you talk horsepower, though, it's not all about the horsepower, is it? No, Because no. it's, it's about, like, torque and how do yes. you get that 60 horsepower into the water? Yes, Is that yes. what differentiates you from cheaper engines? Well, a lot of our performance is not derived from just the pure horsepower. It's derived from the hydrodynamic shape of our lower units going through the water, less right. drag more speed, better fuel economy. Our propellers are so much more efficient than the competition. Right. So a lot of our performance comes not just from the engines, but other parts that are related, propellers and gear cases. Because obviously Yamaha is across the way. Don't yes, want... yes. Do you guys, and this is something I find in our industry, we make lighting for boats, is that when a competition comes out with something, there's always like a, not like an arms race, but an engine race, <laughs> to make yourself better and more efficient and. Is it kind of friendly competition? They come out with something you've got to do better, or is that what always drives the innovation? Yes, the competition is always driving the companies to come out with a better mousetrap. Right. And the winner, <laughs> nice. the winner truly is the consumer. Yes. Because today he has an engine, no matter what brand he goes with, that's more reliable, it's lighter, it's more fuel efficient, uh, it's quieter, 
So the consumer is really the winner. And I've seen on the news lately about uh, engine thefts and lower drive unit thefts, and it's yes. kind of becoming a bit of an epidemic here in South yes. Florida. Has that become more of a question that you get asked by consumers, like how do I prevent this? And what are you guys doing to try and really <laughs> stop that? We can cut this out if you want. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, um, yes, and uh, I'm involved with some uh, law enforcement organizations, and they, they have asked about that. But really, it's uh, where the customer is keeping his boat, um, how well he can safeguard that boat. Yeah. But thieves are um, uh, very opportunistic. Ad adaptive. And well. uh, they're very smart people. It'd yeah. be nice if they channeled that in more positive directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, it's amazing what they will do to steal something. Oh, absolutely. I mean, so it's more about the owners are trying to put a bit more onus on the engine manufacturer and like, well, just keep your boat safe and it kind of well, should limit it, right? Well, one of the things that we do have is a, a theft deterrent system that is a key fob that if it is not in your boat um, and the boat moves more than a couple hundred yards from its location, it then alerts the customer that, hey, your boat is being moved. Yes. So we do have some anti-theft devices for the complete vessel. Yeah. But for things like a lower unit or propeller, we uh, we have prop locks and things like that. But the thieves, they want it. They're going to go right past that. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, I can't remember. I think my father said, if they if they want it, they're always going to get it. Yes, that is and, very true. Uh, like you said, you know, if they put that energy into positive, positive would be a lot better off, right? Yes. Yeah. So Mercury, how is you doing? How are you guys doing as a business? Because one. Thing I've heard from the show is that since the hurricane had its impact, engines and boat manufacturers are so slammed with business right now. And you're on a bit of a backlog. Yeah, uh, not only just the hurricane. I really believe the American economy is on an uptick. Um, I see. We're, di we're dicing the politics now. Yeah, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> politics makes the world go round. So. Um, the economy has been on a, or, or the boat business has been on an uptick since January of 2017. And uh, we're seeing it all the way across, whether people are buying new inflatables, uh, center consoles, runabouts, pontoon boats, and even the big offshore boats with tr twins, triples, quads. Uh, those markets are all just booming. Yeah. So money is being spent in the marine industry, but I also see housing is on the uptick also. Mm. So I think that's, I don't know how automobiles are doing, but. Sure Houses and boats are going good. I'm sure they're doing pretty well. What's the adage? A rising tide lifts all boats, right? Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the history of Mercury? I mean, like I said, we don't know very little about engines. I mean, did they always start in engines or? Mercury it... is a very interesting company. It started in 1939 with our founder, Carl Kiekefer, who was just a genius. Right. And Carl Kiekefer uh, had come out of college and he was going to go into the dairy business to build magnetic separators that take nails and things out of hay so that cows don't eat nails and things. Right, okay. And he bought a, an old farm that had a building on it to manufacture these devices. And in this farm was about 100 defective outboard motors okay. that had been returned from the retail outlets to the manufacturer because they were defective. Mm -hmm. So instead of throwing those units away, Carl said, I can fix these motors I can sell them back to the retail outlets and generate some revenue to start my company. Okay. Well, he fixed them and did such a good job of redesigning that the retail outlets said, we want more, we want more. So that started uh, Kike for Mercury. Okay. So Kike for Mercury, the old adage with him was give the customer more. And for example, when you bought a 10 horsepower outboard from him, it was really maybe a 12 or a 15 horsepower. Okay. So it was faster than anybody else. So That's an interesting sales technique. Under promise and over deliver. Exactly. So eventually, uh, Mr. Kikafer in the, um, oh, let me see, early 70s sold out to the Brunswick Corporation, who to this day owns Mercury Marine. Yes. So uh, we have continued along that. We try to. Uh, so he was an American who started. Oh yeah. By an American company. Uh, well, he was an American out of uh, uh, Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, out okay. of the Wisconsin area, mm -hmm. and so now we're owned by a old American company that goes back to 1870s. Who owns a lot of boat companies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
So that's a little history of Mercury, and uh, he was very big into racing. Uh, I don't know if you follow NASCAR racing. We just had our Daytona 500. I don't, unfortunately, but I know, you know, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's a big thing. So, so Mr. Kikafer went in there, and like everything he did, he went in with a grand scale. Uh, and he actually won the NASCAR championship three years in a row. Well, okay, right. And once you start to dominate, people are not happy with you. Yes. And uh, so he started getting some booing from the crowds and said, I don't want to tarnish the name of my outboards, so he withdrew. Right. But um, yes, he won the NASCAR championship three years in a row. He was the first to bring crews that were dressed in uniforms. He was the first to bring the cars to the racetrack in transporters, huh. a lot of innovations. And if I remember this correctly, he has a few patents, maybe a hundred plus patents to his name. Wow. Very smart man. Very, very smart man. So how did you get involved with Mercury? I, I heard <laughs> a whisper that you've been here for 30 years, right? Yes, this is my 30th year. Um, and what is your role in the company? Are you king of sales? Oh, no, no, I'm, a, I'm on the service side, but I've done okay. many different things for the company. Right. And uh, as a young man of 16, after school and weekends and summers, I worked for the local Mercury distributor okay. in town. So this goes back right to when you were at school? Yes, I was a young man, and I just loved it because boats, you're out on the water, mm -hmm. and you meet a lot of people, and every day is different. And uh, so I worked for dealers for 11 years, and I got the opportunity to work for Mercury Marine as a, as in my present position, as a technical account manager. But I worked for the Latin America and Caribbean division at the time. Okay. So I would travel to the islands, Central and South America, mainly training technicians, uh, assisting technicians with troubleshooting product, training dealers in their service department, warranty administrators, parts managers, things of that sort. So I've done that for Mercury. One of my high points was I was the operations manager at the Lake X test facility, which was our secret racing test development facility. And- uh, But it was, it's not anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> we are back there testing again, which is great. and. We could talk for hours about Lake X. It's, yeah. it's, it's something that those in the marine industry know about, and it's just an awesome place uh, that's still kind of hidden away in secret. Right, okay, I like it. That's very, very cool. So, so, you, so you've done pretty much Different things at Mercury, here. yes. I've done some sales also for Mercury, and uh, I'm just happier on the service side. Absolutely, so you can pretty much fix any engine if it goes wrong, therefore making you a boater's best friend. Is my boss, is my boss watching this? <laughs> well, I'm supposed to know how to fix anything here, so I'm going to say yes. Yeah. But engines, are, the last few years, are just all computerized now, right? I mean, it's you can't really do anything yes. without a quick diagnostics. Right? Even our newest small engines, our 15 and 20 horsepower, have fuel injection. Right. So you would think of those little engines almost like a lawnmower or something that would be simple, carbureted. No, people even at that horsepower range find that fuel economy, the noise, smoothness of the engine, easy to start. That's all very important to that customer As also. Well, yeah. So we try to give him that. It's fantastic. I mean, unfortunately, I had a, I've had a one boat and it had a, um, a Yamaha 250 HP. You have room for stroke. improvement, yes, good. <laughs> room for improvement. But I was just, every time it needed servicing, I was amazed that the guy came with his computer, plugged yes. it in. And this, this is a boat from 2004. Plug it in. Oh, you need this part, this part, this part. I was like, wow, you need. That's amazing, because essentially, I was told once that this is just a Corvette engine on its side, or is that just a gross No, that's the 7 Marine engine. Right, okay, that's the 7 yes, Marine. Yes, yes, right. no, all of our stuff, uh, we build uh, in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, uh, 75 horsepower and above is designed, manufactured, and built in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. So um, we design it, we build it, we do our castings, uh, it's so all this, us. This is made in America as well? Though. Yes, yes. In comparison to not made in America? Correct. Now so we do you, have, guys, do you guys push on that a lot, like made in America? Uh, maybe we should push on it harder. I mean, it's the big thing now, isn't yes, it? Like yes, being made maybe, in America. But yes. Uh, that's very cool. Yes, there's a guy at the top that says, make America great again. I don't know what he means by that. <laughs> that that would skirt very close to some issues. Yes. 
Dear, oh dear. Well, Robert, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate and, uh, it. Have a great show, and we'll see you next time. All right, sounds great. Robert, good.